Hey guys, Josh with the Depth Tape channel, and today we're going to be looking at Old Smokey, the 6NZ. Uh, customer complaint, heavy smoke, uh, seems to go away when it warms up a little bit. And the first thing I like to do is usually look at a few things. So what I'm looking at here is, looks like fuel pressure regulator is original. Uh, it's got newer filters on it. Looks like original harness here. Um, I pretty much do this whenever I'm looking at a truck with any sort of complaint. Yeah, we're going to go on the exhaust side now and just check oil level, anything with the exhaust, see if we can see an exhaust leak, anything like that. Wastegate, uh, yeah, that looks totally factory there with a bolt in the wastegate. Uh, check our oil level. Always good to check your oil level. Um, you'd, you'd hate to start up a truck that doesn't have any oil just because you didn't check it. Oil looks pretty clean. Uh, it might be hard to see here, but it's right on the full mark, so that's good. Next thing we're gonna do is connect to the ECM and start it up and see what's going on here. So anyone that's used ET hates to see that message. It will not communicate with the ECM. So super frustrating, and you can see the comm adapter is not powering up. Comm adapter should be getting power from the truck itself, and that the, where it says power there on the bottom, it should have a red light on, but obviously it is not on. So before I can even troubleshoot the engine, which is the complaint, I have to figure out why it's not communicating, which means we're gonna have to troubleshoot the circuit here, and let's get into troubleshooting that circuit. It's a fairly simple circuit for the data link. Uh, here's what I'm looking at. So you have a, a power in the ground, and then you have your ATA or 1708, and then you have your J1939. So there's typically six wires, even though it's a nine wire connector or pin connector. So I am hooked up to our power and ground here, and I've pulled this connector out so I can kind of secure it better. You could see earlier that it was a little loose, and we don't have any voltage. So either the ground's bad or the power's bad. What I'm doing here is I'm on the J1708, and you could see that with the battery or the voltage jumping like that, that's actually a good thing. When you're on a data link, usually, when the voltage is bouncing like that, that means it's communicating, so that's good. So there is something going on on the data link, but we don't have any voltage going to the plug. So I'm on the J1939 now, and it's either off or this one is just, it has no modules on the J1939. It's an older truck, um, but just seeing what's going on. So first thing to check, we did not have voltage. I did check the ground, the ground was good. We didn't have voltage on the uh, battery power pin. So first thing is, Go through the fuses. I didn't see a dedicated fuse for just the data link, but I'm gonna check all the accessory fuses here. Um, you can see these ones have been replaced because they're not the factory ones. And looking for any that are open or blown. And look at that. That one is not working. So pull the fuse out here and nope. That is not what it's supposed to look like. So we have our new fuse in there, same amperage rating. Hey, look at that. The power's on, I bet it'll communicate now. So now we can actually fire up old Smokey, and as you can see, it is communicating. No faults logged, no events logged. So really all we have is what the customer complaint was, which was heavy white smoke and heavy fuel smell. And just gonna go through, I always like to make sure we have all our sensors reading correctly. You know, if you have a boost pressure sensor, atmospheric pressure sensor, a temp sensor that's not reading correctly, that can throw off your fuel ratios and your fuel mapping for the ECM. Don't wanna do that. So let's fire it up. Any smoke? Uh, yeah. So first thing I like to do is always get our cylinder cutout test ready and cut them out as fast as I can to see if we can isolate if it's one cylinder. Now if it's more than one cylinder, it makes it much more difficult, but if we can isolate it to one cylinder, then you can say, okay, do we have a valve train problem or an injector problem with that particular cylinder? It's like number four. So you cut out number four, look at that, smoke goes away pretty much immediately. So that's a real good indication. Yep, cut it back in, it comes back immediately. So number four is definitely our cause here. here watch. See, goes away. Of course, there's always a slight delay because there's still smoke in the exhaust system. 
So we are going to pull our Mr. Valve cover here. So it's three and four cylinders are over um, the center valve cover. So which this one has the blow by hose on it. Luckily, you don't have to pull this intake tube to pull that center valve cover. And we're going to find out why is it smoking. Now, there are a ton of reasons why it could be smoking. You could have a bad injector. You could have a dead cylinder caused by broken piston rings, cylinder damage. You could have valve train problems. You could have something wrong with the Jake housing. If it had IVAs, it could be the IVAs. And I'm using my little 3 8 Milwaukee stubby impact driver there. I actually, I bought that this year and I really like it a lot. Now what I'm doing here is I'm looking at the underside of the valve cover. I always like to do that because if you have, let's say a blown head gasket or you have coolant getting into the crankcase, you're gonna start to see accumulation of like a milky kind of mayonnaise consistency material on the top of the valve cover. And that usually indicates that you might have a, let's say a cracked cylinder head or a bad head gasket, but we don't have that. So, so does that mean you don't have a cracked head? No, but it's just a really good indication that you definitely, that would be an indication you probably most definitely do. So what I'm looking at here is the rollers on the rocker arms, looking at the rocker arms themselves, making sure they're not snapped off, nothing mechanically damaged with the valve train from what I can see. The injector is not damaged. Uh, it doesn't look like any of the adjusters are messed up. I'm looking at the Jake also to make sure the plunger is not forcing the ro rocker down and holding the exhaust valves open. Just checking everything I can visually. So everything looked good there. I, I know you can't really see from that vantage point exactly, but just kind of showing you what, or telling you what I'm doing as I'm doing it. So next thing I'm gonna be doing is pulling out our Jake housing. And on the 6NZs, the Jake bolts go all the way through the Jake housing and into the cylinder head and they go through the rocker arm shaft. There's no double-sided stud like on the Acert engines or a cert. So you can see the bolts are super long there. Now I didn't break them loose with the little stubby impact there. I almost always break the bolts loose with that long, it's like a 18 inch breaker ratchet, a half inch drive. I don't, I don't typically like to zip them out with an impact if I can, just break them loose by hand. I, I think it loads the components less that way and the bolts less that way, especially ones you're gonna reuse. So, I got the rock or the Jake housings already off. You can see there. Now I'm gonna pull the rocker arm assembly off, and sometimes it'll kind of stick to there, and also it likes to pick up the bridges and drop them onto the top of the head. And no matter what you do, it seems to do that. I got that out. Make sure you don't drop them. It's fairly heavy. So once they are out, you're now ready to. You can see your cam a lot better once they're out of the way. I didn't see any damage to the rollers on the rock rooms, which usually indicates the cam's okay, but it's good to take a look at the lobes themselves. Also, you can get a much better look at the injectors and the valves and valve springs with all that stuff out of the way. Now, this brings up a point that I used to get, I hear criticisms a lot of, oh, these young mechanics, they can't fix anything without a computer. Well, usually this is said from someone that was a mechanic and hasn't worked on an electronic engine before. You literally cannot properly troubleshoot something that is typically ran by a computer without a computer. You can't do a cylinder cutout test. There's no fuel lines to crack to isolate the cylinders. It uses a log style exhaust manifold, so you can't really use an infrared gun or anything. You know, if, if you're working on an electronic engine, especially the newer ones, the newer Cummins and stuff, you know, these are, these engines are over 10 years old. Um, it's almost impossible to try and figure them out without a computer. But anyways, that's just a little side rant. So just showing you the cam here. Um, you can really see the injector lobe here in the center. The The lobes are on are down on the exhaust and the intake, but I checked them out and they were fine. So basically it's looking like it's most likely gonna be an injector here, but we haven't tested the condition of the cylinder itself yet. So you're gonna have to remove the injector, which on C15, once you remove the rocker arms is pretty easy. So we're gonna take our bolt and our spacer. You will need the spacer, but you're not supposed to reuse the bolt. So even if the injector is not the problem, you're gonna to wanna to get a new bolt. Now I'd already removed the little retaining clip nuts that hold the electrical portion on the injector on. They are 930 seconds, which is a weird size. 
And I really recommend these. Uh, GearWrench makes this one. I'm not sure if they make most of them, but they have these indexing pry bars. They are really good. Um, I've got a couple different sizes of them. Um, I highly recommend them. I'll probably put an Amazon link for them and check them out if you're going to get them. Um, you don't need this for these injectors, but something like a C7 injector, oh my goodness, uh, almost impossible to get out unless you're using that style. So we got our injector here. Fuel's always going to pour out because, of course, it's getting fuel fed to it. And we're looking at where the fuel rail runs, um, kind of where it's pouring out there. And it's got two of the three R rings left. The bottom R ring always turns to carbon, and I got a bad perspective on this, but the center O ring which is the blue one, is split. Now, did that split happen when I pulled it or was it already there? Well, we can deduce that the split was not causing it. Why couldn't the O-ring have split and it's pushing fuel into the cylinder? That's possible, but you have to remember that when you cut the, inject or cut the cylinder out, the smoke goes away. If it was always leaking fuel into that cylinder, cutting it out wouldn't matter. It would smoke all the time, but... By cutting it out, you know it's most likely not that. That's not the cause. They almost always split when you pull them out. It's very common. It doesn't mean the injector was split already. Or the O-ring was split already, not the injector. There's nothing mechanically I could find wrong by inspecting the injector. So now we're looking at, okay, we probably either have a bad cylinder or a bad injector. So... Those are the most likely causes. Remember, there were no codes or anything. We don't suspect a bad head gasket. We don't have signs of that. Um, customer didn't complain of coolant use, anything like that. They just said, hey, it smokes a lot. And it's definitely a fuel smell. It's no coolant smell. So what am I doing here? I'm using a brake bleeder. And with this, it uses shop air. And I always evac the cylinders out. And you wanna get all the fuel out of there before, especially before you put a new injector in. but before I do the next test, which we're gonna put shop air into the cylinder, and it's on pretty much top dead center right now. And what we're doing is we're gonna make sure that that cylinder holds air. If you've got a cylinder with broken rings and it's got heavy scoring, which could cause it to miss and smoke like that, then when you apply shop air to it, the cylinder's not gonna hold air because it's not sealing against the piston rings, and it won't hold air, it won't move the, the piston down typically. It, sometimes it'll hold the piston down or push the piston down, but it won't hold air. So now that we've evac the cylinder, and the reason you want to evac it first is because if you pressurize it and then you pop it up, it's going to spray all that fuel out all over your face and all over the engine. So you always evac it, just makes it cleaner. So what I've got here is a little Amflow uh, just blow gun, and I put a, I believe it's a six inch extension on it. And all I'm going to do, you need to have a rubber tip like that, is I'm going to hold it down tightly because it's going to want to push back out and apply some air pressure. Now, you can't see it, but it's actually rotating the engine. It's, it's going to push that piston down, which is a good sign. Also, I'm listening for how much blow by is coming back up out of the crankcase. And then I'm going to slowly lift the air nozzle back up after a couple seconds with it off. And if it holds air that whole time, you're good to go. You've now identified that the cylinder is in good condition. So most likely cause here is the injector itself. Thanks for watching.